There are different ways to represent data that can be more concise and easier to interpret than our intuitive description as function of time. For example, sinusoids can easily be plotted as complex numbers, representing amplitude and phase information, over frequency. This way, even a superposition of several sinusoids, like the black function, can be expressed as two points in a coordinate system. The same principle is applicable to equations and more complicated signals. However, their alternative representations are not as easy to find. We therefore require a mathematical description of how to get there. The mathematical tool we use is the Laplace transform. Applied to our input or output signal, it transforms them from a function of time to a complex valued function of the complex number s. It is difficult to visualize and frequently difficult to calculate. So here it's even empty. <laughs> Fortunately, in most cases, we are not interested in calculating the output from the input, but merely in the relation between output and input. For example, we may apply a current perturbation to an electrochemical interface and measure the voltage response. So we would like to analyze their relation because the interfacial behavior mediates this relation. If we want to compare the interface to an electrical circuit, we can mathematically describe the circuit to see if the voltage-current relation of it matches. In the time domain, even the relation between current and voltage of a capacitor is not straightforward because it is a differential equation. Once further elements get involved, the input-output relation becomes extremely cumbersome to determine and draw conclusions from. Laplace transforming, this differential equation takes it into the S domain, where it is no longer a differential equation. We call Laplace transformed input-output relations transfer functions. Impedance, as relation of voltage output and current input, is a transfer function, which we can analyze to investigate an electrochemical system. It takes the form of 1 over SC. If we want to know how our system responds when excited by sinusoidal functions, without any exponential components, as we assume in EIS, we can evaluate a transfer function as a function of frequency only for S is imaginary unit J, times angular frequency omega. Without having transformed the actual voltage and current signals, we can, for example, learn that higher frequencies will lead to a lower impedance of the capacitor and consequently a higher current flowing for voltage of the same amplitude. We can now measure the input-output relation of an electrochemical system, transform it and match this transfer function to an equivalent electrical circuit. We've looked at resistors and capacitors and how they behave when they are ideal circuit elements. However, in reality, you rarely find ideal circuit elements that accurately describe what's going on. For example, oftentimes a capacitor is obstructed in its charging by a serious resistance. So today, I want to talk about how such a RC serious circuit behaves when a capacitor is um, in series with a resistor and uh, how we can characterize this behavior by something we call a time constant. First, I've modeled such a circuit in two different versions here with actual circuit elements. What you see here is a capacitor of 10 nanofarad capacitance in series with a resistor of 100 mega ohm resistance. Here, I've got a very similar circuit just with different elements where I have a 10 microfarad foil capacitor in series with a 100 kilo ohm resistor. And uh, this entire apparatus is only a grounded underground to give us uh, basically a clearly defined potential, but it doesn't actually do anything to our circuit in that, in that sense. What I now do is I apply a one voltage step over this RC element and measure the current response. What we have discussed before is the ideal behavior of a capacitor, where we would have expected an infinite current spike that immediately goes back to zero after time uh, goes by. What we have instead is a finite current 
spike to here close to um, 10 microamps, which then decays over time with this characteristic shape. Indeed, it takes almost five seconds for this current to be uh, very close to zero. Now let us look at how this behavior changes when we switch our circuit to an RC circuit with different values. So we disconnect the leads, reconnect them here. And we will now apply again a one volt step. And as you see, this current response looks much more like the idealized capacitive response, although when we zoom in, we see exactly the same behavior, where the current peaks at a finite value and then decays to zero with over, over some time. I except here it's not five seconds, but only uh, something on the order of like 0.1 seconds. So what we have is qualitatively the same behavior that just takes different amounts of time. And how long this behavior takes can be characterized by something we call a time constant. And we will discuss this in just a minute at the whiteboard theoretically. Now let us look at an electrochemical system. Hi, my name is Ravi, and I'm a student assistant at the Shape EC Group. Let's have a look at if electrical circuits can mimic electrochemical interfaces by using this simple setup here to measure capacitive, capacitive behavior. We use a stainless steel electrode here, stainless steel foil here to be our working electrode, which is then connected to our reference electrode here and our carbon counter electrode here using our one molar sodium perchlorate solution. Now let's complete this circuit. These wires here then connect to our potentiostat, which is, which is there, which is controlled by this computer here using this interface. Now, let's see if we can actually observe the double layer charging. Here, we can see that the OCP, or the open circuit potential, is right now at minus 65 millivolts with respect to the mercury sulfate reference electrode used. And now I will apply a step potential of 100 millivolts with respect to the reference electrode. Here we are measuring current versus the time. And here you can see that we do see a fast decay of the current, sh showing that the time constant is relevant in electrochemical systems. Welcome back to the whiteboard. What we've just seen in the lab was how an electrochemical double layer responds to a voltage step excitation. What we have is the electrochemical double layer, which we can model as a capacitor, which may have a capacitance CDL. However, this capacitor cannot be uh, charged infinitely fast, because the charges, the ions that have to move into the electrochemical double layer, um, are limited um, by the electrolyte conductivity. And this electrolyte conductivity between this here can be modeled by an ohmic resistor. And we may call this the resistor with the resistivity R or a resistance RL for R electrolyte. And to this system, the potential stat, which I will model as an ideal source, applies a voltage step US. Now, if you recall, these circuit elements, we've discussed their responses to step excitations on their own. So a brief, a brief recap to this. If we apply such a potential step to a resistor, With a voltage over time, just a step, we get a proportional current step response. If we
we apply the same voltage step to a capacitor. Here we have the resistor. Then we have a circuit like this. We have a capacitor here. And the current response is an infinitely large current spike that transfers all the charges necessary to charge the capacitor onto the capacitor. Imagine this infinitely high. And then uh, after the initial charging, no current flows. However, now what we have is not one of these elements alone, but a serious um, connection between them. So, the circuit for the RC element looks like this. The potential stat, or more generally a voltage source, applies a voltage over the resistor and the capacitor, and there are voltages falling off over each of them, while the same current flows through both. And now let's think about what happens if we apply such a voltage step to the system. Now what happens? This voltage step ends up somewhere, and the best way you can think about this circuit is this voltage falling off over the resistor, but the voltage that ends up here is reduced by the voltage of the capacitor. What this means in practice is when you begin to apply this voltage step, this capacitor is not charged, and it can't immediately um, change the voltage that falls off over here, because, well, you have to first bring the charges there. So at the initial moment when you apply the voltage step, all of the source voltage ends up with the resistor. And this means it basically um, acts as if we had a step of the uh, current that was equal to our case here for the resistor. We have the source voltage divided by the resistor as the initial current at the time equals zero where the step is applied. So the current, let's say it's here, and it's US divided by R. But unlike with only the resistor, this current doesn't stay here. Because now what happens, the current flows. And as the current flows, the voltage that is uh, falling off over this increasingly charged capacitor reduces the voltage that falls off over the resistor. And increasingly more and more voltage falls off here over the capacitor until in the final stages, the entire source voltage is applied to the capacitor. In which case, what happens? Well, no voltage falls off over the resistor, and we know that if no voltage falls off over the resistor, also no current needs to flow. So in the end, after uh, a lot of time, the current goes to zero. And the behavior like this is so, of course, a falling current. As the capacitor gets charged, the current that charges the capacitor decreases, because the voltage that drives this current also decreases. So we have this qualitative behavior where the current falls off over some period of time. And some period of time is um, a good keyword because, well, uh, how fast does this current fall off? And this is an interesting question. We can calculate this using the Laplace transform. Um, the general strategy for this would be in the S domain. To calculate this um, complex admittance of the circuit, multiply it with the transform of the step function, and then transform it back into the time domain. I will not do this calculation here, but simply give you the result of this calculation once you go into the time domain. And 
and I will write the result of this uh, transform into the time domain of this current response over here for the sake of space. So the current that you have there in the circuit flowing is here, I, and this current I for the RC series is equal to the initial current step us of r times an exponential function and this exponential function is e to the minus t over rc now this term of course it's a falling ex exponential function we've already figured that out but how fast it falls is governed by this rc term here and the interesting thing about an rc term it's a resistance times a capacitance which has the units of volt over amps times farad, which is amp ampere seconds over volt. This crosses out and it's got a time dimension. So what we have is the running time is set in relation to some time constant here. And this is why we call this RC the time constant, because it governs how fast this exponential function falls. Now let me circle this. This is tau, or time constant. And this is what this is all about. Now let's think about this. Why, why does this make sense? The larger the resistance gets, and the larger the capacitance gets, the larger the time constant is. Because tau is only Rc. It's a product of the two. Now, of course, this governs how obstructed the charging is. So, if you have a larger resistance, of course, well, the charging is lower. There's more obstruction in the way. But also, if you have a larger capacitance, you need more charges to get the same voltage at the capacitor. So you need to charge more. So of course also this will be slower. And this is why the product of these two governs how fast the voltage over the capacitance, uh, capacitor rises and how quickly the current falls off. And now let's think about this for some electrochemical system. Uh, typically what we may have is, uh, for example, an electrolyte resistance. With an example, our electrolyte equal to 50 ohms. Let's put this off. And um, our double layer capacitance may be something like uh, 20 microfarads per square centimeter. And let's just imagine that we've uh, put a working electrode of one square centimeter area there. So we have a double layer capacity of 20 microfarads. And so on what time order does the system respond? We calculate the time constant equals R electrolyte times C double layer. And this is 20 microfarads times 50 ohms. Well, like in this case, 50 ohms times 20 microfarad. 20 times 50 is 1000. 1000 times micro is milli. So it's 1 millisecond. So this system would decay with its current on the order of, micros, uh, of, of milliseconds. And so this is how an RC element responds to a voltage step. The key points of this would be its obstructed charging, the capacitor cannot charge infinitely fast, and how large the resistance and how large the capacitance is. As they get larger, this system responds more slowly.